comes time to start our evening service, thankful for another opportunity to be back in God's house this evening with God's people. I hope and pray you've had a peaceful, restful day. Uh, I talked to somebody on the phone a while ago, and they said it was awful dreary. Well, you know, you've got you got a, got a choice to make here. You know, if you want rain, you're going to have a little bit dreary with it. If you want <laughs> sunshine, you're going, to, you're going to have sun. But, uh, we, you know, we as people are never satisfied. I don't care if, if, the, if the Lord would, would come today and give you everything you wanted, you still wouldn't be satisfied. You'd, you'd want something else. But I'm thankful that you're here this evening. We're here to to raise up our Heavenly Father in, in song and praise and testimony. And we want you to enjoy this service this evening. When you leave here this evening, we want to, we want to feel like we've been in God's house with God's people. And, and that's certainly the way we do that around here is just mind the Lord, sing till you get tired of singing, and then we'll hear the, the precious words brought to us by our pastor. Someone with a prayer request before we go any farther this evening in the service. We should continue to remember the Cox family this evening. Brother Ed has gone home to be with our Heavenly Father. Terry Neal still getting a lot of problems. And her husband also is facing a uh, heart surgery, stuff like that. So, first of all, may you be saved. Yes, amen. Remember him for salvation this evening. My name's Jane again. And uh, my sister Wanda, you know, I just much pray for her. And she had a good report. She had amen. a thrown in. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Someone else. Pardon? Yes. Rosie Cox this evening. Somebody else. Pardon? Oh, okay. Okay. What's wrong with... Is that right? Oh, I know who you're talking about now. Okay. It takes a while to get from here to here to there, you know. And some of us have had, especially mine. Someone else this evening. Some, you had a Vanderpool family this evening. Somebody else. Brother Charlie, I remember my wife being in. Mm -hmm. I remember Brother Jim. He's been dealing with a lot of physical things. Yes, yes amen. Been. Amen. Remember Jim this evening as we pray. Someone else. If no other, Brother Ron, ask God's blessing on this service this evening and these requests for us. Holy God and Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. Lift up your name and praise you, for you're worthy of it. We thank you, dear God, for the rain. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all the things, God, that we take for granted sometimes and how you've blessed us and watched over us. Father, how even though when we go through trials and stuff, you're still there with us, and sometimes we just forget to acknowledge it or even talk to you about it because Satan gets us so caught up in things. We ask you, God, to bless our service tonight. We ask you, God, to use the, the message of tonight to feed us and help us to grow. We pray, Father, that you bless each and every song and every testimony. And Father, we'll never forget to praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Get your hymnal out this evening. And Sister Connie has chosen page 46. 46 for the first selection this evening. <coughs> This world I've tried most everything, and I'm happy now to say there's nothing like religion in the good old fashioned way. I'm walking in the old time way, and I want the world to know that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with the Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway and telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. There are many things I'd like to be as the journey I pursue. I've longed to be a leader like a mortal man would do. I would like to be a millionaire with a million to bestow. But I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord than anything I know. There's nothing like an old-time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in. I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord.
righteous I got right. I sing and pray and shout. All my burdens have been lifted since the Savior brought me out. I would tell the world both far and near as I travel here below that I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord than anything I know. There's nothing like an old-time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway and I'm telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord than anything. Page 384, 384 for the next election this evening. There shall be showers of blessings. We spoke of that song this morning. <clears throat> there shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Gracious reviving again Over the hills and the valleys Sound of abundance of rain Showers of blessing Showers of blessings we need Mercy drops round us are falling But for the showers we bleed there shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we be, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. Amen. Turn back to 345, 345. Where shall we go this morning, this evening? Where shall we go? Where could I go but to the Lord? Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation's sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them every one. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I 
go back to the Lord. Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? I go, oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. And that's what we want to do at this time of the service. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. But let's all stand across the congregation and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and then we'll have our choir come and sing for us after we pray a little bit. But you know that song says, Neighbors are kind. I love them, every one. All my neighbors around me are lost but one. That's my daughter back there. You know, we need to be that light to that neighborhood because they, they can only give us physical things, but when we need manna from above, where do you come to this evening? You come to the Lord. Let's Amen. fellowship, folks.
Does everybody have to put your hand in the hand?
people say amen to that this amen. evening. Amen. Because if you're not laying in a hospital bed somewhere, looking up to the sky or something, not knowing where your next breath is going to come from, you ought to say you're blessed this amen. evening. And I certainly am blessed. Blessed to be here in God's house with God's people. People I've learned to love over the years. And thank the good Lord that he put me in this place I'm at. You know, we've, we've been in a lot of different places, but God brought me back home. This is my home church. This has my, been my church since I was probably that big. I don't know. For really, really, Mom bought us here. But, you know, I'm thankful for this church and, and what it means to this community. You know, a lot of people in this community don't know that this church but we got ladies back there that's been faithful members of this church for many many years and i know i heard him say something about memories there's a lot of memories inside these walls you know and uh, we hold on to them this evening someone with a testimony before we go any farther this evening anybody at all if not i'll ask our bless you arnold amen brother amen bless you Bless your heart, brother. Someone else. Someone else. If, if not, I will ask the archers to come this, at this time and leave our evening offering for us. Brother J.D. asked a blessing this evening on this offering. Lord bless the Father. We just ask you to come down amongst us. And be with George as he brings your word, Lord. And be with the singers as they sing, Lord. And be with those who have to give and those who have not just the same, Lord. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Well, you know what I'm going to ask now, don't you? Who's going to sing for us this evening? Miss, Sister Mary is going to come and sing for us this evening. Be much in prayer for us. She comes this evening to minister to you. You, you. you can do it, Sissy. You can do it. Oh, don't worry about it. That's, that's good old home, folks. You can't use a pink one, by the way. For 10 bucks. Yeah, that's true. She's praying for me, and I'm going to say I really love the Lord tonight. And this song has been on my mind for a long time, so I think I better sing it before I do. Once again, I face Satan this morning. And I battled him all the day long. And in my weakness, God sent reinforcements. And at sundown, I sang victory song. And the sun's coming up in the morning. Every tear will be gone from my eyes. This old clay's gonna give way to glory. And like an eagle, 
I'll take to the skies in this world filled with doubts and confusion. It's so hard when you don't understand, but I'm building on a solid foundation. And I'll hold to God's unchanging hand. And the sun's coming up in the morning. Every tear will be gone from my eyes. This old clay's gonna give way to glory and like an eagle I'll take to the sky Good job, sis. Someone else this evening. Someone else. We're not, we're mi minus one. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead, buddy. Amen, brother. Bless you, brother. Bless your heart. He requested prayer for his dear wife back in the prayer. We may all need to also remember her this evening. Who's going to sing, Jan? <laughs> While well, they're coming, you may want to testify this evening. Anybody at all? feeling well and Debbie was they were going to spend time with her mother-in-law if you know this song sing right along <laughs> life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right and the God of the good times is still God in the valley can talk of faith when you're 
up on the mountain, but talk comes easy when life's at its best, but it's down in the valley of trials and temptations. That's when faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. The God of the day is still God in the night. thousand years have come and gone and his blood is just as strong as the day it flowed so free on the cross of Calvary I found power in the blood and forgiveness for my sin I found a refuge from the storm and sweet peace to live within I found eternal life secure and my soul has been made pure Jesus gave me perfect love I found it all in the blood. Jesus was the sacrifice. No one else could take his place. That was love that held him there. There's nothing like his saving grace. When they laid him Angels roll the sun away. I found power in the blood and forgiveness for my sin. I found a refuge from the storm and sweet peace to live within. I found eternal life secure, and my soul has been made pure. Jesus gave me perfect love. I found it all in the blood. Jesus gave me perfect love. I found it all.
perfect love of Jesus tonight. That's where we find it all. Amen. Amen. Someone else. Someone else. Wayne, you got something? Yeah. Anybody else this evening? Brother George is going to come this evening to minister to us in song and in precious words. Come on, George. Okay. thinking of all these kids that I've worked with over the years. You know, Greg is sitting right there looking down the phone. But he's got the rule of thumb, what he says goes. But they don't know there's a higher judge than them. If they don't get their lives right, he's usually going to make the final decision. I heard that what me and Ella have done over these years, nine, ten years, we've at least touched some to help them it's not for money because I'm nobody I'll never get up and help them I mean I don't I don't get up and say nothing but I do want to give I take a beating every now and then that's all right I should we've got so much thank you to show I'm like Jim there's a lot of times I'll sit back and because I get more out of it than somebody else when I do it myself but I hope that there's something that some of these young adults that we work with at least take in what we say I've seen we've seen virtue we've seen some kids that really been down and they changed their life around and I don't want to say it makes us prideful but we know we had a hand in it just from the instructions that we've given and showed Get closer to the mic. You can't hear my big. Can you hear me now, Richard? I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now, what do you say? I spoke up, Your Honor. I have no defense, and that's when mercy walked in, mercy walked in and pleaded my case, called to the stand of God. God's saving grace of blood was presented as it covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in. Well, I stood there and I wondered, Lord, how? Could this be someone so guilty had just been set free when my chains they were broken I felt born again the moment when mercy walked in mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the stand of God's saving grace the blood was presented as it covered 
my sins forgiven when mercy walked in yes the blood was presented as a cover my sins forgiven when mercy walked in Amen. Thought those little girls are gonna sing one tonight. Are you gonna sing a song? Come on now, we ain't got all night. You getting up here and singing one? All right. Hi. <laughs> Maybe next time. All right. All right. Well, it's good to be with you tonight. If you saw a couple bums sleeping in the parking lot out here, that was Teresa and I. <laughs> Wake up drooling and try to comb your hair real fast and get in here. We, we, we went out there and preached that afternoon service. And if anyone from Hills Chapel is watching, or where did we go last week, or Rehoboth last week, I apologize, but preaching an afternoon service for a preacher is just cruel and unusual punishment because everybody's, you know, they're kind of, and, and here you are trying to get through to them, and their eyes are glazed over. They just, you can tell, they, they're just, they're half asleep. But, but anyhow, we drove through Portsmouth. We came out 125, and Teresa said, where are you headed? Well, I suppose I was headed home because that's where I live. But uh, she said, uh, "Would they have choir practice at five? And she said, it's a little after four now. We just so well go. So by the time we pulled in the parking lot, I don't know. I, I was That's probably the best I've slept in about four or five nights, just sleeping that time in the parking lot. I'm ready for revival now, right? But <laughs> if you have your Bibles uh, and you want to read with me, turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, and um, I'm going to read a piece in chapter 4, and then I'll read a piece also in chapter 8, we'll jump over. Everybody there? First first five books, and so we're here at Deuteronomy, chapter 4, and verse 20. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swear that I should not go over Jordan and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess the good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. In the first part of that scripture that I read to you, uh, Moses is reminding them how God delivered them out of Egypt. But he notice, uh, he touches on this, that God was angry with me for your sakes, and so now I am not allowed to go into that promised land. Well, really, if you would have looked at the root of that problem, it wasn't the children of Israel's fault. It was Moses' fault because he had a problem with his temper, and he never tamed that problem with his temper. Uh, even um, the second time, God spoke to him once and said, I want you to speak to this rock and water would come forth and they could drink. Well, he did and water came forth and God was uh, 
um, praised through that. Well, the next time when the children of Israel begin to grumble and complain uh, about the water, God said to him, uh, first time he said, smack the rock. The next time he said, speak to the rock. Well, the first time he took the staff and he smote the rock and the water came out and the people's like, ah, this is great, you know, and I'm sure he got some of the, the praise for it as well. But the second time, uh, God told him to speak to the rock, and which he did not do. He went out, the people were complaining, he got kind of, uh, uh, the terminology I would use would be maybe fed up with it, and so he just took the, the staff in his hand and he smacked the rock and he said, I give you water, you rebels, and God said, no you don't, no you don't, because that's not what I said for you to do. Now, if you look at the rock and is considered uh, an analogy of Christ in the Old Testament, um, the, the, the Christ was only crucified once, right? And so the smiting of that rock twice wasn't something that God was pleased in. For whatever the purpose, Moses loses his temper and he does that. And then he stands here and he's blaming them. He says, you see that land over there where I'm leading you? I get to lead you all the way to the river of Jordan, but I can't go over because of you, he says. So he says, I want you to do me a favor. Take heed, he says in verse 23, unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God. And so what I want to touch on tonight is not only there, but in chapter 8 you will find these words um, that he, he begins to rehearse the same thing in their ears. And when he gets to verse 11 of chapter 8, it reads like this, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. So he rehearses all the good things that God has done for them, but he gives them a warning. Make sure you don't forget where you have come from and who brought you from there and what God has done for you. And I would say today that that is just as good for us that we would always rehearse in our mind of knowing where we are, knowing what we've come from, knowing what God has delivered us from, but not to forget that. In our day and time, in our society, as I'm sitting up here in the short time that it took Dwayne to sing his song, I'm sitting up here thinking, as it's been mentioned, and I know I don't hear everything in the service um, and, and, and piece it all together like this, but I did hear as they were talking about memories, and Charlie said, uh, the lady said that, that there were a lot of memories in this church. As I sat over here, I thought of all the people that must have at one time in the years since this church was built came to this church. They cried out to God. They wept on this altar. They had prayer requests. The ministers that preached, no matter what their life was like outside of here, they came, they had burdens and concerns just like any other human being, but they still tried to preach the word of God. There was a lot of victory here. No doubt there probably was some defeat here. There were times that people shouted. There were times that people cried probably. There may have been times where people waved the hanky. There may have been times where they ran up and down the pews, but there are memories of people and the times that they've spent here in this church but when we're gone if no one knows about that those memories will be gone as well while we're here, let us remember what God has done for us. I, I sat up here thinking, I wonder if we could just go back 30 years. It's been 30 years since Teresa and I have given our hearts to the Lord and started on, as Brother Don and I were talking in the back, started on the way. Just in 30 years, if you could go back in 40 years, if you could go back 50 years from today and be in some of the churches. Now, you remember what it was like when people would say, and Brother Roy probably raised his children doing this, go from revival to revival, work through the day, go to revival, just churches having a revival, just get out and go. What happened? All of a sudden, the churches stop having a revivals? No. Did people stop stop uh, uh, needing prayer? Did people stop, did preachers stop preaching? No. And so something happens in that period of 50 to 30 to 20 to where we are now where what does Satan do? He kind of gets us to only have this tunnel vision and see what is ahead of us right now. And if we got troubles, we got trials, we can't see what God has done in the past for us sometimes. But we can only see our despair. We can only see our troubles. We can only see our trials. And who 
whoever in the world came up with uh, he who dies with the most toys wins is just an idiot. He's just an idiot because he who dies with the most toys dies with leaving his family the biggest debt, no doubt, because it's it just like this world, our society has got to have, 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 have. And if we don't have, I don't know, people are going to think bad of us. Who cares? But people just keep reaching for and reaching for and reaching for. Well, guess what? If they're not giving it away at the store, you're paying for it. And when you're paying for it, guess what? You got to work for it. And when you got to work for it, guess what? When you got a whole lot of stuff, that's a whole lot more hours you might have to work. And the next thing you know, you aren't seen in the house of God like you used to be. And your concerns when you sit down at the dinner table, if you even sit down at the dinner table, you sit there thinking about how am I going to do this? How am I going to? I want wonder years ago when people were concerned about maybe some how they were going to get their next meal but yet the churches you would go and people would be there what in the world why would people go to church years ago and not go now sometimes they forget sometimes we forget where we've been and what God has done for us I'm not suspecting that that will ever change um Miss Helen, it is what it is. It probably will never change, right, from here on out. You know, there will be some churches. If you have a big church with a big crowd uh, and you and some folks are missing, you know, you, you may think, well, um, but they got a big church, they can handle it. Whether it's a big church or a smaller church of a congregation, the sad part about it would be, do you know what will shut any restaurant around here down? When you stop eating there, when you stop going, do you know what would happen if you would boycott one of the places that is booming today if people all across the United States would say we just don't need that place anymore? They would have to shut it down. Do you know what's happened to a lot of churches because Satan gets people to believe that God doesn't hear anymore. He doesn't answer prayer anymore. He's not the same God he used to be. It's not the same as it used to be. The preachers don't preach like they used to. The singers don't sing like they used to. You don't feel the spirit like you used to. Sometimes I wonder what spirit it is that we are looking for. We've got the Spirit of God that lives in us and if we will come and praise Him, He will meet with us. But sometimes we believe the lie. We forget what God has done for us and believe the lie that eh, there's just not much to offer. And when that happens, what happens to the church? Hey, we pass a little church today. I mean, Teresa talked, and we, we probably talked all the way out the road um, to where we were going to this homecoming. And so we passed this little church today, five cars in the parking lot. Would you build a church today if it was told to you that there will only be five cars and three people come? Probably not. That wasn't the intent of building the church in the first place. The intent of building the church was we're going to build a place where people come. People have kids, right? I mean, people have kids and they say, well, I can't go to church because of my kids. Be careful what you use as an excuse because when the excuse is gone, what will you use then? But if people were to say, but I can't go because my kids have school tomorrow. What? Did they not have it years ago? I mean, is this school thing a new thing? Did we just start this? But somewhere Satan gets us to forget that we need to put the things of God first. And when we do that, and what, and what Moses is trying to get these people to do here, he says, beware, lest you forget. He's already told them in, in chapter 4, he's already told them, take heed to yourselves. He's told them, I'm not going to that promised land because of you. Now you're left here to go on. You better be careful that you don't forget what God has done for you. I think that's a pretty good warning. It's not a threat. It's just a warning. Can we not remember what God has done for us and where he has brought us from? You know, living the Christian life and living life for a while, you get, you get used to things. I, I told Teresa as we were talking this morning, I know exactly 
As a, Satan is subtle, but if you fight with him for 30 years, you, you better learn your enemy. And I know how he tries to attack me and come at me and get to me. And I know those things and I guard against those things. But if I should ever forget the goodness of God, the lies of Satan will penetrate or attempt to penetrate the armor. And I may start believing some of those things. So I have to be on guard. Can't forget the uh, covenant that the Lord has made with me. And it isn't just, George, I'll do right by you if you go to church. It's not that. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Old Testament scripture says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, if you don't have joy in the Lord, then you have no strength. You ever try to do anything when you're wore out, when you have no strength, could you imagine, you ladies, that uh, maybe you're tired tonight and you get up in the morning and all of a sudden someone forgot to tell you but they're going to drop. Oh, well, we got five grandkids. We're going to drop them all off to you. Tomorrow we need you to watch them. Well, you're wore out already. Now here you are. That to me is a battle, <laughs> right? Can you imagine going on the battlefield being wore out? And with no strength and with no energy, if the joy of the Lord is your strength and you have no joy in the Lord, you have no strength. You can't fight the battles. And what Satan wants you to do is forget about the experience, not just that took place when you got saved, because folks, really, in all honesty, when you came and asked the Lord to come into your heart, that's great. What has happened since then? Are you continuing on? It's a, it is a continual thing. Coming to the house of the Lord should be for uh, some different reasons. Should be to, We hear the teaching, we hear the preaching. It is to help us. And we are with one another. We uh, come against some of the same things sometimes. You know, you could have a men's meeting or a ladies meeting and some ladies maybe have the same thing they need to discuss. Some men maybe have the same thing. When you're preaching to a general population of people like this, older people, younger people, middle-aged uh, men and women, when you preach the word of God goes out and all of us can take heart. That what we hear from the word of God is for instruction to help us grow. But when Satan tries to stop your ears, you know, I watch some of you folks that have a hard time hearing. And I know who you are because I say something to you and you don't answer me, right? I know a certain one of you have one of you, certain ones of you all have a hearing problem. If you've ever had a hearing problem, it kind of sets you to yourself. And this is just my take on it. I don't wear hearing aids, although I'm not against them. I just don't wear them because at this point, Unless you'd ask Teresa, I probably don't need them. But something happened, and for about six months, I heard next to nothing out of this ear. And me being a male, I did not go to the doctor to find out why. I just thought, well, you know, it'll either fall off, get better, and we'll go on. And, and so, but I would go to restaurants. And we, our family would be around us. And I, it almost isolated me. I almost stopped communicating with people because not only could I not hear what they were saying, but I was afraid if I said something to what they were saying, it wasn't going to be the right answer anyhow because I didn't hear what it was. And there would be times I would just sit there and I began to just feel like I was just in my own little... And I don't know if... You... I don't know if you heard, they did a study that said sometimes uh, they, the studies show that dementia or Alzheimer's uh, is more rapid in people who are hard of hearing because they feel alone somewhere already. And when I heard that, I thought, isn't that strange? But that's the feeling I got like I was isolated from people. Now, could you imagine not being able to hear and then being blind too? I'm talking physically. Could you imagine being that person in this world who could not hear and then be blind too? And if you were reaching out for some kind of help, well, what Satan does for us as Christians is uh, before we're saved, we are blinded and we are deaf to the, to the voice of God. We're blinded to seeing what God wants. But what Satan wants to do is once we're saved, he wants to come back and do the same thing to us. He wants to put us in bondage. He wants for us to think, wow, and to idolize the times that might have been decent before we were saved. He wants you to think, you remember when you used to do that and what a good time you had when you were doing that back there 
And I would say that hardly ever, unless he uses it against you in a situation like that, will he come and say, look, you're a terrible person because of what you did back there. There are times he wants you to forget it, and there are times he never wants you to forget it. Well, one time that he wants you to forget the love and the grace of God is when you consider, well, what is there that I can do for God? You know, we were talking to someone before service as we were talking. We were talking about being feeling like you're needed in the church, feeling like you not only are wanted there, needed there. That, and that's one reason why I wanted the ability to set up here. Man, I thought... You know, you guys got a little cubby over here. And what this basically says is we got room for three musicians and no more or four or whatever. And when I saw that, I thought, well, it's not a very uh, inviting place because it is like kind of. And I don't want the people that are there to say, okay, well, we're going to take places and trade with others. But I wanted to be able to say, you know, it'd be nice if somebody came in and they wanted to play. They didn't feel. And so my mind, I looked at that and I thought, uh, what if what if they get this feeling like I'm not welcome here? Well, you know, we tear down the walls, take those two things down, thanks to the men that did that, and then I sit up here by myself. I just sit up here by myself. And so the people that I felt like, hey, they're going to come, it's going to be great, it's, it's like, okay, he tore down the walls, we're not going back there anymore. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But what I was trying to do was welcome people in. I wanted them to feel like they were a part. But I know that if they come in, you give them something. If they're capable of doing, they can do it. Give them something to do because it makes them feel like this is their church. They have a part here. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I wouldn't be satisfied just going to a church and sitting and listening to Charlie every time lead the service, every time everybody do the things that we do sometimes time repetitive and me just sit there and do nothing now I'm not saying that if you don't do much that you're comfortable with that but I would just feel like isn't there something for me to do well I'm telling you tonight Satan wants you to feel like there's nothing for you to do and if you do nothing and you are content with that then God bless you that's fantastic but don't forget where God brought you from you have a great future in him there's a lot that God has to offer you but if you forget the very time not only of salvation but the growth where you are to this point you Satan starts putting little things in front of you and the next thing you know the people that come even the people that are faithful if I could say anything of you let me be able to say if God could say anything of me let him be able to say of me when I see him well done thou good and faithful faithful servant faithfulness what if what if tonight um, Satan is to offer you some way and, and steal your mind away and make you maybe dwell on the past. I, I, really, I really long for this period. I really wish, and it happens to people sometimes. You see people get so dissatisfied with their, with their spouse, or with their job, or with where they are. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And when a person starts becoming dissatisfied with, their, with, with not only their, their spouse, their job, their church, when you start looking at all those things, I can see a person where if they were a Christian, somewhere Satan has weeded his little way in there and tried to make them forget the goodness of God. And Moses is saying, do not forget. Take heed lest ye forget. Wouldn't it be terrible if you just stood on the other side of judgment and judgment took place five minutes ago and you're standing on the other side of it all of a sudden saying, why didn't I just do what God said? Well, that's what Moses did. God says to go out and speak to the rock and he goes out the second time and smacks it. And when God told him what would happen to him, I guarantee you he thought, wow, why did I do that? Satan make him forget who he is, who God is. The power comes from Moses. Go out there and smack that rock. Those people, you're probably tired of that anyhow. Go out there and show them who's boss. Well, whatever the purpose was, whatever got him to do that, there was a consequence to pay for it. There always is a consequence to pay for it. 
You know, sometimes we live in a, we, this is a small community compared to the whole world, right? This is a small community compared to Scioto County, whatever. We may look at it, and sometimes our little problems are so big in our eyes. As I visit people around this church, and some people say why they don't come, why they won't come, why they can't come, why they'll never come. And it's the same thing. I don't care if you go to Myrtle Beach or wherever it is you live as a pastor. If that's your intention, you will find people that just are not happy with something. And I think, would you prefer that we bring Charles Stanley or Billy Graham back from the dead and put him in the pulpit and have the greatest choir ever to sing? We will never be perfect, but what Satan tries to do is he tries to get in the mind of the person and make them remember all the bad things and forget all the good things and how many people will die separated from God because all they can remember is the bad things that happened in the church or the bad things that happened in an area but they fail to remember the good things it's one thing to be forgetful and many of us are forgetful I'm sure you're forgetful at times <laughs> I mean, this, I'm, and, I, and I don't say this jesting and joking because I, I do work around, and I'm very uh, careful to watch people at times. I do work around people all the time who have dementia, and I see early onset, and I see people in their late 50s and early 60s who uh, are getting to the point where they can't remember their name and they don't know their family, and it is a scary thing, but it is reality, and so I don't say this in jesting or joking, but I think to myself, the older we get, it seems like there's little things that just start slipping, and just little things that we forget. And Satan is very subtle. He wants you to forget the little things that God has done for you. And the next thing you know, he'll work on the big things that God has done for you. Do you know there are prayers that Teresa and I have prayed in almost 30 years of being saved that I don't even have a clue what they were anymore? I would prayed them then. They meant something to me then. I don't have a clue what they were now, but they were very important. But then there are few, huge prayers that I haven't forgot. But I guarantee you Satan would love for me to forget that. If you can look in your past and you could see they sang God on the mountain, that's a part of remembering. If he's God uh, on the mountain, he's God when you're in the valley. If you remember who he is on the mountain, remember who he is in the valley. Moses is saying, uh, take heed to yourselves lest you forget the covenant that God has made with you. And I would say, folks, today, be careful that you don't forget the goodness of God, what he has done for you. You may be here today and, and me not knowing all of you real well. Maybe there's something that you have fought and wrestled with and struggled with. And maybe uh, we've been here since March. And so maybe right before we got here, maybe there was a major change in your life that I have no idea of knowing about. But God knows. Maybe other people around you know too. I don't know. But in that period, Satan could come to you and say, look how bad things are. And you know what we do when, when that happens? It's kind of close to use illustrations when now you're somewhere in front of someone that may watch and hear what you say, right, other than the church. But I was speaking with someone the other day, and they were grieving the loss of something. And I said, you're losing what's in front of you right now. The children, the people that are placed with you right now. You're grieving so much of what you've lost back one, two, three, five years ago that you're forgetting what is in front of you right now. And Satan's job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so maybe Satan is saying to you why you should be maybe coming along and rejoicing over what God has done for you now. Maybe it's still a time of grieving for you. I said this morning and there are seven steps uh, that they would say step, seven steps in the grieving process and, and maybe more. Some people claim that there would be more. They label them and you go through these certain phases. Um, but I would say that Satan would love to get you right tonight, hold you here, let you see nothing but the bad and help you forget all the good that God has ever done for you. And I would say to you, man, don't forget the covenant that God made with you. He promised you something, Wayne. He promised you something, Roy. J.D., he made you a promise. Well, what do we do with that? 
Do we just, it gets tough sometimes, folks. So what do we do with it? Just say, ah, oh, that's it. I can't go anymore. That's it. And, and you see people that will do that sometimes, and they struggle a little, and they go through a problem. You don't see them for a service or two, and the next thing you know, they rebound, and they're back on their feet. But let me warn you against something. Some people never rebound. They never rebound. And, and after pastoring for a while, you get to seeing that type of person. You start looking at them, and you, and you try to surround them, or you try to send them help, or you try to pray extra for them. But it's always this, like, they're either everything or nothing. And the next thing you know, boom, they're down. And next thing you know, they don't come at all anymore. And what do they need? Well, they need forewarned, be careful that you don't forget where God has brought you from, what he's done for you. But folks, also look forward to what he's going to do for you. Because if you give up today, I know you got family that's lost. And you give up today and those people that are looking at you, they know they ain't got it. But if they even somewhat believe you do, they got some confidence in you. I can guarantee you tonight if Teresa and I would walk away from this church, if I'd never pick up another Bible, if I would quit doing what I do with Heartland, if I'd go back to doing any other job and say I'm not preaching anymore, I want nothing to do with that, I would hurt a multitude of people in my own family who look at me although they are not coming to this church. And I want them to come here. There are some people that I pastored for years before I left here who have fallen by the wayside. They go nowhere now. They say to me, we're looking to come to your church I've had some of them say to me before I started pastoring this was a cop out this was an easy out for them when you going to get a church when you get a church we'll come boom I got one they had their phone disconnected they changed their number they moved to Myrtle Beach <laughs> they didn't want to hear from me then boom got a church come on who's that who George who <laughs> yeah they may not come themselves or one of themselves but if if I were to say that's it I'm done it would hurt a lot of people what happens when Satan comes in and he gets the person to believe that God is not as faithful and Moses is saying look don't don't forget what God has done for you and that's all I'm asking you tonight is don't ever forget what God's done for you is it as good as it could be for you right now probably not could it be worse it could be could it be better? It could be. But it is what it is. And while it is what it is, don't forget what God has done for you. Give him praise and thanks for what he's done for you. And continue walking and working for him. Stand with me tonight if you will. Maybe you're here tonight and you have a need, just something you'd like to pray about. I appreciate our musicians so much. I appreciate Connie's attentiveness to does she need to come or does she not. I appreciate that, Connie. God is good to us, folks. Right. Satan, he wants to blind you from seeing that. He wants to blind you from the goodness of God before you're saved and after he wants to blind you to the fact that God has even helped you in any part of your life. He wants to try to make you feel like that God does not care. And we know that's not the case. We know it's not the truth, but we know that's how Satan plays. And after, after serving God for years, it may be easy for me to see that, but sometimes it's harder for people to see that than what it should be. Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for all you do for us. God, I remember myself, my wife, Remember the church.